I was a very highly functioning non-commissioned officer. I was a platoon sergeant at the time. Um, I was kind of always being groomed for that next rank. Uh, I was getting sent to the right schools, had the support of my chain of command. Things were going really good. Uh, after I witnessed this traumatic event in uh, on my last deployment in Iraq, um, that's when the medications really started coming. I mean, full force. And um, like I said before, I you know before I knew it, I was on nine to twelve different kind of medications. And uh, when I was going through the separation process in the army, I had to get some physicals and evaluations from outside people. Uh, these professionals would see my records come up on the screen and the amount of medications that I was put on throughout my time in the Army, but especially the last couple of years, and they would literally gasp. And they, would, they, they were shocked at the, at the amount of drugs, the high doses of these drugs. It, it, it was like a six-page rap sheet. With all the ways psychiatric drugs can react on your body, how do psychiatrists counteract a side effect from a drug they've given you? I can't sleep at night. The stomach pains are worse than They don't take you off the drug. They'll either raise the dosage, which can cause more side effects, or they'll add another drug, which will add even more, then another, and another. It was clear right away that they really had no idea what anything that they were giving me was really going to do. And they said, this drug may not work. You may need a different one. This one may need a higher dose. This one may need a lower dose. There was friends of mine that I saw had two, three, four pills that they had to take daily. You find soldiers that are on dozens of, of, of medications. And when I say, you know, seven to nine drugs at one point, I'd say that was very uh, average. I've, I've heard as high as 14. I know of some troops personally who were given up to 20 different drugs. It's kind of depressing if you look at uh, the number of medications that I've been on. It's very thick. It makes up a large portion of my medical file with the Veterans Administration. And a lot of people were on not only psychiatric drugs, but drugs for their injuries. And the combination made them different. They weren't the same people. They're mixing amphetamines with painkillers and antidepressants and sleeping pills. I mean, even the, to the unlearned, that sounds insane. This practice is so common, they've even got a name for it, polypharmacy. And here's a little known fact. Many of these drugs have never been tested in combination, which makes those taking the drugs little more than guinea pigs. The danger escalates with every increase in dose and every increase in the number of medications. I have watched my clients who have been prescribed psychotropic drugs, sometimes a cocktail, often a cocktail, sometimes a single drug, and they are grievously changed. If they were experiencing an adverse effect, how would they know which drug it was? Was it the antipsychotic? Who knows? Was it the antidepressant? Was it a combination? These guys don't know. All they know is they're supposed to take these because their doctor said they'll be better. And in fact, they only got worse. And the problem is that there's no attention to the detail of what happens to these troops that are placed on them. There's no follow-up. They're simply placed on them, given them, given a great big huge supply of them, and they're sent out to fight. In fact, some American soldiers are routinely given up to 180 days worth of psychiatric drugs when they go to the front. No supervision, no restrictions, just take them when they want. And what happens to it when they go into combat? Are they sharing with their friends? Sure they are. Uh, that's why I've been told by social workers, uh, corpsmen, uh, medics, that 90% of the troops in combat have at one time or other taken some type of psychiatric medication. It's just a grand, crazy, insane pharmaceutical roulette 
that's being conducted at the expense of our nation's sons and daughters, really. My husband never did drugs, nothing, never did anything. And I dated him five years before I married him. And he never did anything like that. And then when he was in Afghanistan, the psychiatrist over there started giving him the medications for uh, depression and of course the pain that he was in because he had been hit. And the first time he got hit, they just started drugging him up. And the second time he was hit is when they sent him home to me. And two weeks after him being home, the violence was so incredible. I told him that we needed counseling or we just needed to get a divorce because I couldn't live in the abuse that I had just gone through because my husband never treated me that way. Needless to say, at that point, I didn't realize that these drugs were affecting him. At one point in time, my husband was on 21 drugs, 21 at one time. I mean, and it, it was craziness. This is not, I don't even know who this person is that I lived with. I've tried to get him help right from the beginning with the drugs, and they're refusing him any help. They just keep continuing to give him the drugs, and he's not getting any treatment. Um, his physical needs are not being met, and he's continuing to deteriorate on a daily basis. Um, his, uh, the whites of his eyes are now yellow. They have a yellow tint to them. His skin color is green and gray, um, and this happens often. And we do have the fear that we will wake up in the morning and he's going to die. Every day we live that every day. His daughter lives that every day. I live that every day. Is today the day that he's going to die? Is today the day I'm going to get the call? They need to give me my husband's life back is what they need to do. They need to take him off the drugs so that he can think. <clears throat> he, he can't think. He doesn't, he doesn't know. The horrible reality is that once on these drugs, it's hell to get off them. You can get addicted to some in as little as two weeks. Now we have soldiers coming back from the battlefield and they're addicted to psychotropic medications and they have a detox reaction back in civilian life and they begin to exhibit the side effects for which they were being pre-medicated. So they become depressed, they become suicidal. Not only is it dangerous to be on these drugs, it's also very dangerous to come off of them. Yeah, in fact, in many cases, the suicides happen immediately after someone stops taking an antidepressant drug. So if you do that, make sure you do it in a way where you have medical supervision and you have a support system in place so you can get off of those drugs safely. Trying to get off psych meds by yourself, especially cold turkey, is very dangerous because of the terrible effects you may experience. I'm having anxiety, I'm perspiring, I just don't know what to do. Psychiatrists will tell you it's the return of your mental illness and that you need to get back on your drugs. That isn't true. This is withdrawal, just like with any street drug. The doctor did not tell me if I did come straight off of these that there would be a worse effect. I didn't know that. So when I did come off it, I fell harder. These are actually addictive drugs, you know, and I didn't know how to act without them. The withdrawal process is, is, is rough. And one of the things that I experienced is all these emotions, all these feelings, all these trauma, all these, all this sadness that wasn't being dealt with, wasn't being cared for. It was, it was just being medicated. When I got off all those drugs, it was like a floodgate. Even though you come off those pills, there's a period of time for, I think, a long, long time that that stuff is coming out of your system. Um, you know, and sometimes you think that life would be better if you were dead. It's shocking how many soldiers are returning home addicted to psychiatric drugs. A U.S. Army investigation discovered that as many as 35% of warrior transition units have a prescription drug problem. And very often, the addiction is not temporary, but for a lifetime. But it can get even worse than that. Because sometimes, these drugs can turn deadly, striking quickly, and without any warning.